Hi, uh, my name is Doug Wyatt, and I'm going to talk to you today as the Director of Clinical Research for the Center for Nutritional Research about the nation's biggest health problem. Now, it's interesting, a couple of days ago in the Wall Street Journal, Judy Foreman had an essay about her upcoming book that had just been published, A Nation in Pain, Our Biggest Health Problem. And I think she hit on only one aspect of it. But she was right. She was talking about the fact, and she made a startling statement in this. She said that we have over 100 million Americans that are in chronic pain. 100 million Americans. Now, last count in the last census, I think we're looking at 340 million Americans in the whole country. So 100 million is just about half of the adult population in this country. And we know that all of these people are taking pain medications intermittently or consistently, because pain medications, both over-the-counter and prescription, are the number one selling and the number one abused category of drugs in the country. Now, why is that important? We were talking about the biggest health problem. I think you might have thought that Judy Foreman thinks that pain is our biggest health problem. I don't think so, because you see pain is a symptom of, an, of another problem that is more epidemic. And it truly is an epidemic issue. I want to talk about the fact that seven out of 10 people today going to see a doctor for any reason, any doctor, whether it's a chiropractor or whether it's your MD, internal medicine, the family doctor, a DO, naturopathic physician, or an acupuncturist, Seven out of ten of these people are going because they have gastrointestinal health issues. So the number two selling drug category is for gastrointestinal complaints, both prescription and non-prescription. And the reason we want to tie these together is because pain medications have been proven to cause what we call gastrointestinal distress, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, or what is becoming more commonly known as leaky gut syndrome. Now, why do we want to call this leaky gut syndrome? Well, if you look at the black box on your pain medication, the federal government has a warning. And the warning states, quite frankly, that taking these medications will cause bleeding in the stomach and the gastrointestinal tract. And what the really cell telling you is that it causes holes in your gut. And that allows a very nasty condition to occur leaky gut syndrome. And this is an epidemic. We estimate, and the research that we've done at the Center for Nutritional Research, estimates that 85% or more of our public has leaky gut syndrome. Now, what does leaky gut syndrome lead to? Leaky gut syndrome leads to pain. And we take pain medications to get rid of the inflammation and the pain, and the pain medications cause leaky gut syndrome. Now, does that sound like it's a ridiculous, nasty circle of, of circumstances? But even more important, is for, it's important for us to understand what leaky gut syndrome leads to besides just holes in our gut. And it's bad enough that we can imagine that our brown river and our intestine is flowing into the red river. Oh, my goodness, I can't imagine a more nasty scenario, can you? And so we've got toxins, in other words, disease-causing nasty pathogens flowing into our bloodstream. We've got partially digested foods flowing into our bloodstream. And the body's immune system says, oh my gosh, we've got to deal with this invasion of these foreign substances. And so we create an immune response to this process. Now, if we've got a transfer across into the bloodstream of, of some connective tissue off that piece of chicken we ate, or that beef, or pork, and that connective tissue isn't fully digested into amino acids, and it gets under our bloodstream, and then our body creates antibodies for that. And guess what? That looks like our connective tissue in our body. And so the body is, starts attacking and eroding our own joint tissue. And we call this osteoarthritis. And arthritis currently affects about 40 million people in the United States. Now, I think it affects 80 to 100 million people. It's just that 40 million are in pain. The rest of them, the disease hasn't progressed far enough to get to the point of where they have gone to the doctor for a diagnosis. But remember, before that ever happens, they probably went down to the local drugstore 
and picked up some aspirin or ibuprofen or Tylenol and they've been self-medicating. And self-medication creates the holes in our gut. So we're right back into that nasty situation. So leaky gut syndrome is the primary cause of food allergies, sensitivities, environmental allergies and sensitivities, Lung problems are directly tied to this, and so is ba brain barrier permeability. So we're looking at neurological diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's have been directly tied into leaky gut syndrome as a pathway, in other words, for the body to create the kind of antibodies that start d destroying different kinds of tissue around the body. And the type of tissue that gets destroyed really depends upon what had been leaking across that blood, that bowel barrier and how the body reacted to it. And so we end up, there's 400 autoimmune disease conditions today that doctors have identified, and every one of these have had a direct tie into leaky gut syndrome. So leaky gut syndrome is tied into other chronic disease too. It's tied into heart disease because the type of pathogens that infect our arterial walls that can also infect our dental caries, we call dental caries, causing gingivitis, also infect our bowel wall in our intestine and creating permeability in all of these places and that pathogen gets into our bloodstream, infects our arterial walls and our body tries to fight it off, creating inflammation creating clogged arteries in its attempt to patch the holes that these pathogens are causing in our arterial walls, and we call this heart disease. We call this arterial sclerosis. Cancer is another sign. That is, the body overwhelmed in its immune response to a point of where it can't deal with cancer cells that are popping up. When we have an immune system that's healthy, and we are not trying to deal with all the issues associated with leaky gut, we have a significant health benefit in that our body is better prepared and better able to defend against other issues such as cancer. So it's critical that we understand that leaky gut syndrome is the first step that is necessary in order for us, if we're going to take a look at any pathogenic disease process, we have to start with the cause. Now Hippocrates, many thousands of years ago, I'm sure you've heard of him, he's the father of medicine. And as the father of medicine, he stated that all disease begins in the gut. Now today, our physicians really do recognize this process and pathway of disease that begins in the gastrointestinal tract. But they haven't figured out just how epidemic it is. So let's talk a little bit about, we talked about the fact we've got 100 million people in this country probably taking pain medications on a continual basis. We've got 60 million people that abuse alcohol on a daily basis in this country. That causes leaky gut. So does taking antibiotics. Antibiotics cause leaky gut syndrome. We've seen the relationship between leaky gut and infants leading to autism and diabetes type 1. We've seen leaky gut syndrome causing allergies and improper immune responses in our young and it's closely related to sudden infant death syndrome and respiratory viral syndrome in infants. And we've seen the fact that we have antibiotics in our food supply. We're feeding antibiotics to perfectly healthy animals. How ridiculous is that? And then they pass that on in their excrement into the water supply so that we have antibiotics, we have pharmaceutical drugs in the nation's water supply, we have it in our food supply because we're feeding it the animals and we're eating the animal flesh and so we're constantly taking in antibiotics whether we want to or not and other pain medications and other pharmaceutical drugs and let's top it off with this fact we've now had confirmation that GMO treated plants corn especially and canola oil and other plants that are treated at, that are that are GMO these GMO plants produce pesticides in significant amounts. Roundup, in other words, is in your food supply. You're eating it. And what this does is it destroys the gut tissue. It destroys the cell wall of the GI tract. And there's enzymes that are produced in GMO, GMO corn and canola oil that, that have been shown to damage and destroy the cellular lining of our GI tract, creating leaky gut syndrome, 
IBS, etc. So it's pretty difficult to get away from the causal factors related to gastrointestinal distress and IBS and leaky gut syndrome. And if it's left untreated or if it's treated with steroids and the wrong kind of, wrong kind of medications, this leads to further erosion of the gut lining, leads to a continual process of where the end result out of this for all of these, all of patients suffering from this is, is a chronic disease of some sort or another. So what we're imploring physicians and, and we're imploring the public is to recognize that leaky gut syndrome as a cause factor of this needs to be addressed first before we can address any other health issues. Now, there's only one substance in the world that has been proven clinically in animal and human studies to prevent and heal leaky gut syndrome. When I first got involved with colostrum 25 years ago, we found that it was critical to take a look at colostrum and gastrointestinal health because colostrum had the ability to come in and close the holes that exist in the gastrointestinal tract naturally in all mammals. This is there so that colostrum can transfer immunity to the young. But it needs to be healed up within days or the milk when it comes in gets transferred into the bloodstream and creates all these nasty reactions. Now, historically that's what happened. But years ago, Dr. Spock came out and said it was just fine to, to, to skip breastfeeding. And so formulas took the place of breastfeeding. And there are no growth factors. There's no immunoglobulins. There's no fact lactoferrin. There's no living components, nothing in any of the formulas that you replace breast milk with. And we recommend that you breastfeed for at least two years so that we get a constant seeding and healing of the gastrointestinal tract. So when we studied colostrum at work in pig models where we were looking at excess stomach acids that simulate ulcers in humans, we found out that the colostrum not only healed the lesions in the gastrointestinal tract in the stomach, but it prevented it from happening in the first place, even if there was the presence of excess stomach acid. We repeated these trials later on. They were done by the Royal Hospital in London, Dr. Playford and a group of gastroenterologists, some of the top GI docs in the world, used bovine colostrum. And they were using it to prevent, see if it would prevent damage from pain medications of all kinds. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs eat holes in your gut. We discussed this earlier, and we all know that that's the truth, because the federal government makes us, all of the pain medications carry a black box warning that this will erode your gastrointestinal tract. So in the studies that were done in London, not only was colostrum capable of preventing it, but it healed existing damage. And so we can stop the progress of leaky gut syndrome only through bovine colostrum. It was what nature designed and developed to make our gastrointestinal tract perfect. And it has the capability of providing the kind of benefits that nature designed. So if you'd like to learn more about this and learn more about leaky gut syndrome and colostrum and what it can do for GI health, we invite you to visit the Center for Nutritional Research. It's a nonprofit organization foundation that is dedicated to the research of nutritional health and chronic, chronic disease issues. And out of that process, we are dedicated in trying to provide you with information so that you can take back sovereign control of your own health issues. We feel it's important that you as a consumer and as a physician understand the relationship between gastrointestinal health and chronic disease issues. And we have articles on that site that can help you understand it. We hope you've enjoyed this very short video and introduction into GI health and chronic disease. And we hope that this has been beneficial. Thank you very much and be well.